Hello guys, I am back finally after a few months of not posting any vlogs I'm finally back here and recording Many things happened since my uh, last vlog which was the recap of my Poker October challenge where I remind you that I tried to play 250 hours in one single month a major thing that happened in uh, the last period is that we made a contract for another apartment so we now made a full year uh, contract for this apartment which is in the same building in which we were staying before but it's 27th floor and we are committed to be here in Macau for a month of course every three months we have to go out to uh, reset our visas but uh, that's not such a big problem uh, and now we have the comfort of not having to move every month and search for a different place in different locations around uh, around Macau now we have all our stuff in one place and this is a huge uh, thing for, for us plus it's uh, cheaper if you rent for a longer period of time so I'm uh, really really glad we did that another great thing about about staying in this apartment building is that uh, alongside with the gym the squash court sauna the pool and every other facility there is there's this reading room which basically is almost empty so uh, i have a very quiet place for me to work on and i love this i can come here before going to a poker session do some study put some hands into the solver or uh, do other uh, computer work so i really really love this place is uh, this is my new favorite place in the building After the October challenge we took a well-deserved vacation, we went one week uh, in Bali with a group of friends, we rented a house there and it was really really fun, many things to do in Bali, it was our first time, we did scuba diving, we did surfing and uh, surprisingly my girlfriend Anda was one of the best surfers, actually the girls were the best surf surfers among us. Uh, I don't know why, maybe because they are lighter, but whatever. <laughs> so we did many activities there and um, we really enjoyed Bali. Hopefully we will get back uh, soon. After the Bali trip, uh, I came back to Macau and I sat down and analyzed my overall performance for October and uh, I'm not completely pleased with it and for sure there must be something I'm doing wrong with uh, respect to how I play the game. So I decided to sit down and uh, go back on the drawing board so to speak to study the game and to improve my uh, leaks so I did that for the, almost the rest of the month I only played 10 days in, uh, in November and these were at the end of the month and I spent like two weeks uh, studying almost every day I didn't I didn't feel like playing so I subscribed to every poker site possible and studied live poker, studied GTOs, studied solutions, solvers, everything there is to study. I uh, rebuilt my game from pre-flop, post-flop play. I just dissected the game into small pieces and studied each of them. And I think I'm pleased with how uh, that worked because uh, for the rest of the days in, in November, I played for only 
10 days and I won almost 20,000 US dollars. But before before get going into into that, I want to introduce a new thing to this vlog. Question of the week. So basically each week I'm going to ask you a question. You can answer in the comment section of each video and then the next week in the next vlog uh, I'm going to uh, give you my answer and hopefully this way maybe we can all learn something with uh, different questions. This week questions question comes from a day when I didn't really have any hands so I was caught dead at the table. I was staying there and thinking how often should I really make hands? How often should I get a playable hand? So I was thinking specifically about aces, like how often should I get aces, how many, how much should I wait before I get a, a big pair. So my question to you is, how often should you get a pair between pocket tens and pocket aces, included those hands, it would be like maybe every three hours, maybe once a day, maybe once every two days, or how often should we get one of those big big pairs uh, leave me your answers below next in the next vlog I'm gonna give you my answer so this first hand that I want to talk about um, I defend 8-7 suited in the big blind uh, against a hijack open I call a flop seabed with second pair backdoor flush draw the turn is a good one for, for my hand. This uh, gives, gives me enough equity, I think, to call another, another bet on the turn or even possibly turn this hand into a bluff by check raising. Now, depending on the, my villain's size, if he sizes down, I think I'm, I have to turn this hand into a bluff because then I think he has, his hands will be most likely uh, medium strength made hands that cannot resist pressure. And if I only call against those hands, I do very poorly because he can then uh, freely check back the river by having the best hand. But it's not the case, our villain uh, decides to check back and we see a free river. Boom! Money in the bank card for us. We have a flush now and uh, given the fact that my opponent checked, I'm, I'm not sure that he's gonna bluff very often here, so probably the best play is to bet with uh, my flush and possibly I'm gonna have a few other bluffs, maybe a 5 that I'm gonna turn into a bluff at this point, or maybe if I have some ace high type hands, maybe I can turn those into a bluff as well. I go ahead and bet 1.2k and my opponent decides to raise 3.2. Of course, this is, uh, this is a call, there's no point in doing anything else, and he has ace 3 offsuit with no heart with nothing it would have been a good play from him if he had like the ace of hearts but like this i think he's gonna bluff way too much anyway obviously this is a bad play from his part and what can i say live games are still good guys i think i should mention though uh we are playing 5100 hong kong dollars that's 612 us dollars yeah like we won on 8000 hong kong pot that's almost a thousand us just for your reference in case uh you don't know that this next hand ace nine suited we are open versus limp we go heads up to the flop Ace jack eight, uh, ace nine is gonna be sometimes a bet, sometimes a check. This time I decided to check it back. I don't think I can take three streets of value with my hand, so somewhere along the line I have to check and I decided to check the flop to protect hands that I'm gonna check, like, I don't know, queens or maybe uh, jack or tens or nines, stuff like that. Turn a very good card for us, but our opponent bets an over bet 50% more than the pot, so 1.5k. Uh, I cannot fold just yet, even if it's an overbet. This nine, of course, uh, might give him some sort of queen 10 
that has a straight, but at the same time he might have a jack 9 or 9-8 or pocket 9s, which is uh, less often, but still. So I decided to call the turn and see what happens on the river, uh, which brings uh, this uh, complete blank and he overbets again. Now, given the sizing, overbet turn, overbet river, he's very polarized, meaning that at this point I don't think he has uh, weaker two pairs that will play like this, and I think he can only have like a queen 10 or a bluff. For him to have a bluff, he would have to have some sort of a 10, right? Like 10-9 or 10-8 that decides to turn it into a bluff, and that's like three combos each. But then, um, given the fact that he limped, I think in my games, people limp a lot with uh, queen 10 offsuit, king jack offsuit, jack 10 offsuit, stuff like that, ace jack off offsuit. So uh, he has all the combinations of straight possible, that's 12 combinations, which is a lot. So I decided to um, fold this one uh, a little bit too too tight i think in theory because i wouldn't have too many better hands to call with i would have maybe pocket nines and i'd have maybe pocket aces that i check back the flop with i don't think i would have queen 10 that that much yeah maybe maybe it's better to call here with ace 10 if i really think my opponent is capable of bluffing because then i would bluff some i would, I would uh, block some of his straight combinations but in live games people don't bluff enough and when they overbet they need a ton of bluff to have a balanced strategy and I doubt they have it so I decided to make this a fold. We call an open from the small blind with pocket eights we flop top set and we go ahead and check raise right here. There are a lot of money to be put into the pot, so I don't want to uh, take the risk of uh, not having a chance to to get all in by the river. And we get called. The turn is the money card, which is which not only gives me a full house, but possibly gives my opponent a flush. So I have no reason to slow play here. I go ahead, bet big and set up the stacks so that I can shove uh, the river. The river is a king neutral card, maybe a bad one for me in case he had something like jacks or queens, then he, he might not want to call my all in but uh, we do shovel in and we do get called by what I don't know so I would uh, have to live with it in this next hand we play 50 100 200 and we open a screen offsuit we get called uh, we get a three bet from the small blind which is uh, a fairly loose opponent preflop. I'd say he's a recreational player that has a VIP status in the casino, almost. So uh, he can be very spewy and he doesn't have uh, too much logic in what he's doing. Flop King, King 4, not the best flop for us, but knowing that he can uh, surely be uh, spazzing out with uh, many weaker hands. I don't have a reason here to not call his uh, less than a third pot size bet. Turn is a 10, uh, which gives me a gut shot as well. Uh, so I also think my ace and queen are pretty safe given uh, the type of opponent I'm uh, against. I mean, uh, maybe my queen is not very good. I don't know. He, he might have jacks, maybe nines, he might have queens. I, I, I'm not sure if he bluffs with this sizing, but I, I still can. I'm not ready to fold this hand just yet against uh, such a profile. Money card again on the river. He bets 1.8k. So at this point, I'm pretty sure he's trying to get some sort of thin value. Like maybe he has aces or queens. I don't know. I decide that I have to raise to 
get some thin value from his range. I'm I'm pretty sure that he's not bluffing like seven eight of spades here with this sizing. So he might have like something like uh, I would say queens aces or ace jack. So I raised to 6k, which is a little bit over uh, three times his bet size. I would figure this is an uh, easy call for him, and we win this one too. We don't know what he had. Again, 50, 100, 200, so the game was mandatory straddle. We opened to 600 days for suited, a few calls, and we hit the topper, and the straddle player decides to lead out for a small amount and uh, I'm not very comfortable just calling here having other players after me so I raise he calls and again money card on the turn he leads again small and now I'm pretty sure he has some sort of an ace and uh, I have to raise again and try to get as much money in by the river he calls and checks the river and uh, I bet 10k, uh, I'm not sure about my sizing here, should I go all in? The pot is almost 20k, I have uh, a little bit over the pot. Hmm. So I'm basically targeting an ace and given the fact that I said that he's most likely uh, holding when he calls and then leads the turn again, it's probably an ace. I mean, I don't think he has like ace king or ace jack and I'm not sure if he pays all in. I decided to go for half pot, but maybe I should have went all in. Uh, if I remember well, uh, he tanked a lot, so I think my sizing is, is good. One trick that I that you can use when deciding if your bet sizing was okay or not, the longer the opponent tanks and then calls, then probably you you have the, the right amount. So if you bet the sizing and your opponent immediately calls, probably you could have gotten away with betting bigger. But if he takes a long time to call you, then the amount was just right. If he takes takes a lot of time and he falls, then you bet, your bet was too big. And here I remember that he tanked for a while, so I guess my sizing was good. And uh, he showed me this hand, ace-nine of spades. Uh, we got lucky again. And of course, how come? How can you win 20,000 US in 10 days without getting lucky, right? It's like hitting a tournament. You have to win some flips. This is a similar hand with the ace-queen hand earlier, where I floated uh, in position. But now I'm out of position and I decide to call an open with ace-jack off. And this is the same player uh, against whom I played the ace-queen hand. So I again decide to call his small bet here. My image was really really tight at that moment and I thought that I still have ace-high, I could be good with ace-high. I also uh, have a gut shot which when I hit it might get me uh, a lot of money and also I have the jack of spades which means that when the flush completes I can represent a flush and bluff it away so for example if he bets flop it's very likely with this sizing that he's gonna check back the turn and when the flush completes either on the turn or on the river I can bluff the river so this was my plan. Uh, the turn, obviously it's not very good, but fortunately he checks back. The nine of spade hits the river, and now having the jack of spade, I can also represent jack queen, I can have spades. So I decided to bluff it away. It worked. I bluffed 3000 and he folds immediately. <music> No good run is any good if you don't have some pocket aces. We were playing four-handed, the game was about to break. The button, which was uh, newly at the table, he looked like a um, weakish regular, Chinese regular. I think I played with him a couple of times, but don't have much information about him. He uh, raises to 2.5x in the button and uh, I re-raised to 4x from the straddle with pocket aces, red aces and we go heads up to the flop which is 4-5 uh, deuce 
you don't. Here um, I can go absolutely either way. I mean, I can I can fold that for sure, but I can check call. I think it's a decent play on this flop. So I, I have to develop a checking range for sure. Also, I can bet because I still have over like the best uh, pair and he can have uh, all the other pairs about five. But I decided to do something else and I think that people here when I check they will uh, auto bet like they expect to get a lot of folds like they put the opponent in overcards in his queen or king queen or stuff like that and they expect to get folds and I think they will overplay here and they will bet too much and they will bet too much of value hands as well like they will bet too much queens, jacks, tens, nines, eights, sevens to protect their hand like it would make sense to bet sevens but uh, if you are against a tough opponent that can develop a check uh, balance check raising range here then you are in big trouble when you start betting over pocket pairs that are not very strong and cannot resist too much pressure. So um, I decided to check raise this hand and he bets uh, 1800, we make it 6000. And the plan here is to jam the turn, a safe turn, like if a club doesn't come, it's pretty much safe. Turn is actually a very good card and we decide to go in and he tanks for a while and calls me. With pocket queens, we win this one. Uh, if I just bet, probably he just ends up call, call, calling. I'm not sure if I can get all the money, but probably I can because it was a 3 bet pot either way. But um, in this way, I get the money all in by the turn and I don't uh, risk the chance of the board turning ugly and uh, I can lose action. <laughs> This hand played against a regular who isolates from the button to 400 and pocket nines could be just a call here but uh, the small blind I like to mix in some 3 bets uh, with these type of hands uh, mainly to take the pot down and uh, to uh, better define our ranges Anyway, I 3-bet and he calls me in the button. So this is one of the, the regulars, uh, the Western regulars that I play against here in Macau. And he, I think he respects my game very much. And here, uh, I, of course, I can have a lot of ace-king. He doesn't, res doesn't have too many. I have to find some bluffs here. Probably I would start checking an ace jack, ace 10 or uh, hands like that and then it doesn't leave me with many options to block with and I thought that pocket nines would be a great hand to bluff with and I would go with the small sizing I think I would do the same with ace king but I'm not sure if it, that's the right approach probably ace king wants to bet that bigger so I would have to go with a bigger bet probably the the leverage point is on the turn when I will have to introduce a big bet. So uh, the turn is where I will get the most votes. So I have to follow up uh, with the bet on the turn, but I, I don't like my sizing now looking at the hand. I think I should have gone bigger because this king will get value from maybe jack stands, king queen. So uh, it wants to bet bigger. But we get the fold, so that's what matters. 